Hi guys, welcome to Emerson Aurora Design. Today we're making a shimmery mermaid tail, a 3D effect on this 12 ounce modern curve tumbler. I prepped my tumbler by sanding it down, washing it, then spraying with Rust-Oleum two times. It's so white spray paint. You also need double-sided tape, whatever size you prefer, and scissors. These are scales that I cut from thin cardstock that I purchased from Michaels. I downloaded the SVG file of mermaid scales from Cricut and cut them with my Cricut in various colors. First thing you want to do is take the double sided tape. You'll see here in a second that I do start at the bottom and work my way up. So here's the double sided tape going down. I did leave a little bit of an edge at the bottom. I did not want my scales overlapping that bottom. I want the bottom of the cup to lay flat, sit flat when it is on the table. So press that down firmly, make sure it's on good, and peel back your double sided tape. And then I just begin laying my scales down. You want to make sure that the pointed side is facing up, the curved side down. And I lay these end to end, touching but not overlapping. I don't have a rhyme or reason as to, or a pattern as to how I lay the colors down. I just pick up the ones First ones that come to me. At first, it was a little hard um, picking up the small scales. I wanted to use smaller scales on this cup because it is a small cup. In a minute, you'll see that I decided to start using a pair of tweezers to pick up the scales, and that ended up being a little faster and more convenient for me. There's no right or wrong answer. There's no right or wrong uh, way to do this. This is the way that I just decided to make this mermaid cup. It is the second cup that I've made. The first one turned out so pretty I wanted to make a second. As you can see, I don't really have a pattern. So here on the second row, you want to take your double-sided tape and just cover those points so that the scales will overlap and create a 3D effect. So in the second row, you want to line up the scales. You'll see me do that here in a second. My fingers were too big. So I lined up the scales with the indention curve that the first row made. And you can see it slightly overlaps. But you don't want to overlap too much. You want to make it even so that the scales lay relatively flat. And you can see the tweezers work a little better for me. And I was able to get into a faster groove. My tape kept sticking to my fabric. It's so pretty. The cardstock I purchased had different textures to it. One was a holographic white with a actually a crisscross pattern almost reminded me of mermaid scales. One is actually a pearl opal or pearl uh, shimmer 
and uh, they're glittered ones. Um, the purple is a almost like a chameleon purple to blue. Here I am down further on the cup. You may have to adjust the way you lay the scales as you go up the curve. I did have to a little. Just don't. Just make sure that you cover the cup. Um, it's okay if you overlay a little bit um, because you won't notice once everything's down. I love doing cups like this. I love intricate patterns. Trying something new. As you can see there, there's a little gap. That's okay. We'll cover that when we get to the next row. And ultimately, once we put resin on this cup, I'll also be sprinkling some glitter to hide, hide some of that. So uh, this is the first row as I'm coming up to the wider portion of the curve. And you can see that there will be a little bit more gap in between, but you don't really notice in the final product. Oh my gosh, it's so satisfying. As you can see, there may there are a couple that are overlapped, but doesn't make much of a difference. Now we're at the top of the row. This is where it gets a little tricky. So I laid my double-sided tape at the top, not going over the rim. Make, leave a little edge at the top of the rim because you want the epoxy to be able to adhere to your cup and form a seal. This really didn't take too long. I think I was working on the cup for a total of about 20 minutes. This is a small cup. So this um, last row, we are going to put them down, the scales down, just like we have been. And you'll see what we do to finish that top off. Um, actually, I didn't show it. The top, I did flip the scales so that the curve was at the top. Um, we're going to camouflage that with some glitter here in a minute. So I mix my epoxy. I am using Quick Set by the Glitter Craze. It cures in about two to four hours. I like to use this for my first coat over glitter or the scales or anything textured because then I'm able to come back in just a few hours later and add more resin. This is the satisfying part for me. I love putting resin on my cup. It really makes the colors pop and it makes it sparkle and shine. Make sure you rub the resin in really well. There's a little bit of glitter there. Rub the resin in really well. This is a 3D cup so there will be a little texture, so it will need at least three layers of resin. Make sure you resin the bottom. Right now I don't have anything on any scales on the bottom, but we're going to put some glitter there. The reason why I'm using the Quick Set, which cures quickly resin, um, I totally forgot a step that a lot of people do when they're working with cardstock and fabric. I forgot to coat my tumbler, seal my tumbler in with Mod Podge. That's what I did with my first cup that I made here. I coated three coats of Mod Podge over the cardstock to help prevent any wet spots from the resin. I got really lucky using the, the quick set. It never did soak into the cardstock to cause any wet spots. I figured since I made that mistake, I was going to just camouflage with glitter, but I never needed to do that. So I got lucky. I think it's because it's such a fast curing resin. Maybe that made the difference. But I would recommend probably at least sealing your cardstock before the resin with Mod Podge. I'm just making sure that the resin is worked into all the little crevices. 
The nice thing about this one is that it actually didn't even have any bubbles I thought it would. So here's a little holographic white uh, glitter mix that I just had from several different um, glitters that I've used as a dump bucket. I'm going to use that to add some sparkle. So I'm going to cover the bottom. I am kind of making an ombre over the edge so that it just comes up over the edge to the bottom. Um, you'll see here, I'm not, this one's, it's not a real precise method of glittering. I just want it to be kind of organic and look like there's movement. Almost like the glitter is actually like bubbles stirred up from the mermaid tail. This glitter has beautiful, chunky, iridescent pieces in it that is, I just love. It really added something. It looked, reminded me of bubbles once it was done. So I'm getting the top hole so you can see, and that's how we're camouflaging that top edge. And now I'm just sprinkling little layers of the glitter. I don't want to coat the whole cup with glitter. I thought it would take away from the beautiful cardstock shimmer. Make sure when you're using chunky glitter that you pat down the large areas that stick up so that you don't have to do more sanding later. I didn't use a ton of glitter so it really worked well. Just adding some more glitter. can never have enough glitter. And here is the final result after that first layer of resin. I will go back and add another thick flood coat of resin. And then I added my decals and one more layer of resin. Um, on this one I decided to use a holographic mermaid and a name. I believe that this cup turned out gorgeous and I hope that you have fun trying your own version. And I would love to see your take on this. Thank you so much. Please subscribe.